how I'm making this. Then draped a corset pattern onto the dress form. And once I had the correct fit, I transferred the fabric pieces into tissue paper and then used them as templates to cut out the foam. The key here being that you want to cut any foam bust pieces with no seam allowance because foam gets adhered at the seam. And making sure to mark all of these little notches and you just do them with a marker and that way you can line up when you're gluing together with your contact cement. I also knew that this wouldn't be a full corset, that it would have a hip build out. So I have noted that on the pattern and then cut that in foam. But I'm keeping this pattern because if you add seam allowance to it, it's a great corset pattern or bodice pattern for a dress. Next, I'll be adhering everything with contact cement. This design is gonna have some filigree accent details to it. And I have cast already in liquid plastic some cool pieces. These are just molds from, you know, you can buy them. They're mostly for like candy or if you're gonna make costumes. And how you get these to work around the shape is that you use a heat gun to heat them up and then you can re-bend them without them breaking, at least fingers crossed. But because this is drag and I want those accent pieces to be more exaggerated, I ended up buying some wood filigree carvings and now I am waiting for this to cure. So making some silicone molds, then I'll be able to cast these in liquid plastic as many as I want, or I can even try using uh, the foam sculpt, which is the um, cosplay foam and, and you, it's like a dough and then you put it in there and it, it cures. But I've had issues with that in the past because sometimes it will just rise out of the mold so you don't get all the cool like little details. So we'll try it again, but otherwise liquid plastic is works. Here is what the bodice looks like assembled. And you might be asking why it's not attached at the sides. That's because I want to make this very easy for shipping. So ultimately, I've left these little under flaps, which there will be a really heavy duty piece of Velcro here and on the underside here. And then these will get attached like this when you want to wear it. And I'm going to, you know, smooth those down and make sure they fit together really nicely. Um, yeah, a lot easier for wear. And then again, in the back, there will be Velcro on this side and Velcro on this side. And <clears throat> attaching here as well will be a hip piece that will also be Velcroed in. So ultimately, when packing for shipping or, you know, touring or whatever, you'll just be able to kind of put it all together um, nicely versus having to try and find a suitcase that fits one big bust. And pro tip, um, so I use this stuff. You can also use Barge, but I tried a different brand before going back to Weldwood and boy, it did not work. And uh, I buy a little like squeezy tube and pour that into here. It's a little bit more manageable. This stuff is pretty flammable and gross. So you kind of don't want to get it on yourself. And when you're uh, putting this on the edges, Take a little spare piece of foam and kind of smooth it over the edge. So right, as you can see, I have a lot of glops here. That is from using a very old bottle of this stuff. Because when I went to the hardware store, the only kind they had was a brand I'd never used and it didn't adhere. So yeah, this is all terrible. I'm going to have to go and dremel all of this out and sand it all down before applying... Um, any decor or anything. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. Well, that's where we're at. Here's what this looks like without any primer or paint on it. And the process of decorating all of this is pretty simple, time consuming, but simple. Um, glue or hot glue for all the scale detail. And then what I found after some glue tests with all of this uh, 
plastic molding pieces is heating them up with the heat gun to get the shape that you want and then using hot glue that seemed to be the thing that stuck the best uh, I carved some little claw features out of uh, moldable foam clay so when that dries it'll be the same material as this but here's what it looks like I mean this is pretty cool once it has a paint job on it it's gonna be really awesome I'm very excited to see what's next we are at the spray painting stage but before I'm gonna spray paint this what I have done is done two coats of cause bond and cause bond is basically just like Elmer's glue um, and it'll help seal in the foam and any sort of any bubbles or things like that and it makes it so the spray paint goes on really really well now this painting tactic I'm gonna try something a little different I don't know if it's gonna work but I'm gonna start with a darker more of a gunmetal metallic and then I'm gonna lightly hit it with like a chrome mirror and then go in and brush a silver metallic on the top of all the tops of things and hopefully this will be a different technique to the usual way of spray painting it all bright silver and then going in and aging it with dark black paint I'm just trying to preserve as much shine as possible so I think this might work I guess we'll find out When I won my first season, I felt like a butterfly emerging from a cocoon. This time I feel like a magnificent sorceress witch warrior decked out in bejeweled armor. <laughs>